In this session, we will take a look at why finite state machines are useful to engineers, programmers, and scientists. It turns out that state machines are most valuable to systems with abrupt changes. If your system consists of nothing but continuous dynamics, with inputs that gradually change over time and system behavior that doesn't switch instantaneously, then you probably don't need a state machine. However, there are many great candidates out there, an ATM or cash machine being one of them because it deals with discrete input. ATMs rely on software that runs constantly and responds as a user presses buttons. How then would you go about writing code to respond to these instantaneous inputs? One programming strategy would be to write separate functions that determine what to do when a particular button is pressed. So when the user presses, say, the number three, how should the system react? Well, we need to answer some questions to get this right. Did the person already swipe their card? If so, are they trying to enter their PIN? If not, are they entering the value of a withdrawal or deposit? If they aren't, what else could they possibly be doing? If you try to handle all potential situations where the number three is pressed, you'll end up with a long list of nested if, else if, else statements in your code, each one checking various internal and global variables in order to decide what to do. This approach will be challenging because you'll have to contend with every possible combination of variables. Even the most diligent programmer can make an oversight that would lead to missing or flawed logic. One way to drastically simplify things is to instead think about the ATM software as comprised of a fixed number of states. Each state can be conceived of as its own little universe, enabling us to more clearly define rules and desired behavior under a particular set of circumstances. So rather than contend with every possible outcome when a user presses three, we can write concise code that handles swiping a card, entering a PIN, choosing a transaction type, and so on. In each of these states, there are fewer things that can happen when the user pushes three. By compartmentalizing the problem into smaller segments like this, it is easier to satisfy our goals. These principles are, of course, valuable not only to cash machines, but to a wide array of problems. Aircraft, automobiles, and robotics are a few of the many fields that rely heavily on state machines to manage complex logic. So now that you know when to use finite state machines, what is the best way of expressing them? One approach is to write a requirements document that details all the different modes of operation and their expected behavior. However, this generally takes a lot of effort and does not necessarily convey interaction well. On the other hand, state transition diagrams display the system visually, which can make the connections between these states far more apparent. Once you understand the diagram's semantics, these pictures are indeed worth a thousand words. Of course, you can scribble diagrams on napkins to help you think through the early phases of design, but there are many computing tools available that help draft state transition diagrams. A number of these tools enable you to test the system in simulation and play out what-if scenarios. And if you're designing a finite state machine that emulates a software component, you can use these tools to automatically convert your diagram into code. What this means is that a state transition diagram can serve as a high-level starting point for a complex software design process. This can prove a far more effective development strategy than diving straight into writing thousands of lines of code. 